Hello and welcome to lesson number 3.2. It's all about symbology in this case. So, as we have mentioned up front, there are different ways of representing uh, vectorial data. We have polygons, we have points, we have lines, and everything is wrapped up in this current uh, project here, still saved as lesson 2.1. Let's resave this one. Uh, and as you, as you might have seen the colors are not really good chosen because of course water normally has not this type of reddish color here so let me introduce you about the symbology of different types first of all let's go to land use land use is now just a full symbol with a simple fold you can easily adjust the color here and select a grayish color just by using the um, this uh, different tools you can select a grayish one let's say okay or just use a gray fill shortcut here in the favorites so let's press on okay now everything is in gray that's one way then there are of course different entities because what we can now do this we can also say, well, land use is not quite obvious, but water should be blue, right? So let's open up this again. Simple blue fill. This is now a bluish color. Say OK. That's it for the moment. Now all the water polygons have a blue color. And this is easier to understand for the reader of your map. Um, then there is a simple structure. At the current, we have a polygon. That is only a fill. And if we have a closer look to this, there's this fill, and underneath it, we have a symbol layer, which is of type simple fill. There are different types. Maybe we will have a look at them later on. But let's have a look at this simple fill first. There's a fill color, so everything that is inside the polygon. And then we have a stroke color, that means the outer edge of the polygon. And in our case, now, the stroke color is a little bit different from the fill color, which is good at the moment. And you can also increase the stroke width and the stroke star. So let's increase this to 0 0.46. Where are my waters? What's going on? Was it too thick then? Yes, it was. 0 0.46. That's the number. Let's click on apply. Now this looks much better. You can also put it to 1.46. So we look here. So that's quite thick then. And we will keep it with 0 0.46. Let's click on apply and say OK. So, remember that render function. So, look here, and you can see this line in a different color set than the interior. Once we press on render again, the uh, thickness of the line will be adjusted. Now, sometimes I prefer to use a non border style. That means you only have a fill of the polygon. Let's go to land use. Uh, let's have a look here on the simple fill again. You can see now the stroke color is quite or light gray. Let's switch to no pen at all. That means that we have no yeah, overlapping styles or whatsoever. We cannot differentiate whether a polygon sits directly beside one or the other. So let's click on OK. And now we have just the fill of the polygon. And there's another layer that is not really good. So let's have a look here on the rivers. First of all, rivers, the line of the rivers has a color of those, I don't know, whatever this is, quite pinkish. Uh, let's check a simple line in blue and make it a little bit thicker to be able to identify it more clearly. Now, Let's switch off the OSM standard file. Now we have great blue lines. As you can see, there's still a selection going on. So what I will do now, I will say clear um, 
could say deselect. So now I can see the rivers in blue and the lakes in blue, thicker line and land use in some more dark gray. And sometimes it is not very uh, clever to visualize everything on the map without taking care of the of the current scale. In this example we have buildings. Buildings are quite distinctive, so very very small polygons, and they are not easy to identify once you zoom out. So why not just skipping it? Uh, and not trying to render it on the PC, which takes time for your computer and makes the whole project a little bit slower to render, a little bit more or a little bit less um, easy to work with. So therefore, you can adjust the, um, the buildings here and say, I would like to render it just in a very distinctive scale. That means if I go here and say, well, I would like to see this layer once i'm closer to to one to ten thousand um and not in this current setup so now i cannot see the buildings at all they are also light gray here or marked as light gray so that means i cannot see them at the current zoom level users of arcgis might remember this this is also the same way it works in arcgis so once i'm zooming in so let's have a look here on the scale. I'm 12,681. No layer visible. Once I'm zooming in to a value lower than 10,000, I can see the layer. As said, 10,001. No way. 999. There we are. So, and this is a way of how to how to interact with the layer in a, in a smart way. Okay. So if you have a lot of features a lot of yeah a lot of features that are quite small and you don't want to see and deal with them on a certain level on a certain scale just use this rendering functionality now when we're looking at the buildings um they have that yeah, brownish color here and let's have a look on the on the symbology tab again you've seen the simple fill and the fill and there's a plus function that means that they can also add different layers of symbology. And um, yeah, let's do this to differentiate the buildings a little bit better. What I will do now, I will first switch to a, a different color set. I would like to use, um, yeah, let's go with gray again. And what I will now do, I will add a new simple fill layer. This is now blue. And it will of course cover the whole the whole polygon feature so we'll not see the gray simple fill beneath it so it works exactly the same way like the like the layers of information in the map canvas on top of each other what i will do now i will switch the simple fill to um not a fill color and not a fill style solid but to a diagonal filling and not in the full color of blue, but in some black. Let's apply this. There we are. So now all the buildings have these diagonal lines. We can do so as well with the uh, with the land use with the um, with the land use layer. Go there. Add a new simple fill. Oh, blue. Let's use red in this case. Okay. And the full style will be the cross. Okay. Well, this looks a little bit awkward now, but you can play around with that as well. So you can easily say, well, this does not look so good. I would like to use thinner lines okay and now this looks a little bit different maybe adjust the grayish tone to make it lighter
something has happened now. I'm not able to see my simple field here. There it is again. And you can even say it's even thinner. And this is a way how to work with different symbol layers in this case. That's it for the moment. I will create a new video for the second part of that lesson 3.2 as it involves some other tactics. And thank you very much for watching. Take care and goodbye.